Activity picks up with multiple solar storms, one of them is Earth directed, and some returning big flare players rotate back into Earth view. Those stories and more in the news this week. Ever dream of a career at the forefront of space and technology? Join us for the course Operational Space Weather Fundamentals in the historic heart of L'Aquila, Italy. This unique week-long program delivers cutting-edge space science with real-world applications for our modern age. Get hands-on laboratory training and make predictions alongside world-renowned experts. Network with future leaders while you gain state-of-the-art expertise that sets you apart and ready to address the needs of the rapidly emerging space sector. Midweek, take an adventurous tour to several medieval villages on the outskirts of L'Aquila. Refresh yourself with breathtaking landscapes and architectural wonders. Feel inspired for the future as you explore this region's rich past. Discover the impact of space weather on our world and become the pioneers of tomorrow. Sign up for Operational Space Weather Fundamentals today. Your journey begins now. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week kicks up an activity in a big way. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see we're saying goodbye to region 3599, but not before this whole cluster of active regions really begins to up the ante when it comes to activity. We'll talk more about that in a second. Meanwhile, we've been paying attention to a lot of these filaments. In fact, this one here in the north, it launches whoosh like that. This is a solar storm, as we can tell from the chronographs, that's going to go mainly northward of Earth. We're probably not going to see much, if any, effects from that solar storm so we're not worried about it but look back at the west limb watch this in fact you can see this kind of evacuate like whoosh do you see that that was hard to see but in coronagraphs oh my goodness look at this massive solar storm launch this is actually such a large solar storm it was probably launched from region 3599 along with a big solar flare but we didn't see the flare because it's on the sun's far side but it was so big that it actually launched a radiation storm and we've been dealing with that over the last couple days in fact we actually even had a second solar storm launch there shortly after the first one so this is going to be a very interesting set of regions to watch as they rotate to the sun's far side and whether or not they survive their far side passage. Meanwhile, if you look center disk, on the 16th we had a little poof right there. That was a little mini solar storm launch. We might feel the effects of that, but it's probably not going to be all that much. Then after that, on the 17th you're seeing, uh, or on the 16th rather, you're seeing a big so uh, solar flare. This was an M 3.5 flare, you can see here in the, the DRAP model, you can see the radiation storm that's ongoing. That was from the stuff that happened on the West Limb, but watch for this big radio blackout. This was an R1 level radio blackout from this region. So this was a flare, a, a solar flare that was occurring from a region that isn't even in Earth view yet. So likely this is a big X flare player because that solar flare would have been a lot bigger had it not been for it being occulted like that. So we do have a lot of activity you can continue to see more activity here and more big flares are going to be on their way. Meanwhile, when we actually take a look at some region down in here, we're going to, I'm going to replay that. Look at this filament. Watch this. This is on the 17th. Whoosh! Did you see that? That's a big solar storm launch. And finally, we finally get an Earth-directed solar storm out of all of these different launches that are going on all over the place. As we take a look in coronagraphs, you can start to see the halo kind of building here. You also will see a little bit of a halo right here as well. Let me play that. You see that? You can see this big ring that kind of goes almost all the way around the sun. It's kind of hard to see the part on the... Uh, on the west side or the east side there. Let me back it up just a little bit, but you can see it as I whip it back and forth right there. See that? That was actually a, a indicating that we do have a solar storm that is going to be Earth directed. I'll talk more about the model runs here in a minute, but we're going to definitely be having some fun from that, what's called what we're calling the St. Paddy's Day uh, solar storm launch. Now, meanwhile, as we take a look at our far sighted sun, well, this is because we can no longer use uh, stereo AIA imagery or stereo imagery because stereo is looking at the same side of the sun we are, we have to resort to looking at AIA and HMI imagery of about two weeks ago to kind of get an idea of what is lurking on the sun's far side. And as we do that, of course, region 
3590, that is the bad boy. That was a big X player player the last time it was in Earthview. In fact, that has now rotated. It's, it's rotating into Earthview now as region 3614. But it is not the only one. We also have this big long line of active regions and several of them were quite active uh, the last time around. In fact, as we take a look at our JSOC HMI Helio Seismology Farsighted Viewer, this region in gray is the front side of the sun. Everything in yellow or gold is in the far side. And so you can see region 3590 as it was rotating to the sun's far side, kind of surviving its far side passage. But we also had region 3592, 98, and 95. These regions also look like they're surviving their far side passage. You can see the dark regions coming up here. And, and then on top of that, we do have this new region right here. This region is the one that actually gave us that big M flare, uh, the M3.5 flare. You don't even see that here. That's somewhere down in this area. In fact, as I keep pushing this forward, you barely see it as this re right there. So this is a region that has just recently been growing. This is not a, an old uh, friend, so to speak. And so we will be watching this very carefully because that region is going to be rotating. You know, it was right here is where it was growing. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect to have big solar flares on the menu this week because we are going to be seeing all of these regions rotate back into Earthview and we could have more solar storms on the way. Now, switching to our moon, we are coming through the second quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 25th. So, you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora, you're going to have this bright companion. So, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Now, returning to that earthward directed solar storm, we switch to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as I set this solar storm model in motion, you can see that storm being launched mainly to the west of Earth, but also a bit to the south of Earth. Yet there is this little finger-like part that is going to give us a glancing blow according to the NOAA model, basically about 1600 UTC on the 20th. Now, as we switch to the NASA version of the model, again, you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. As I set this model in motion, you can see again, we've got that solar storm being launched again to the west and to the south, but this time, it looks like it's going to be a bit more of a, a not, you know, flanking blow. It's not going to be a glancing blow. It's going, we're going to get a little bit more of a direct impact. In fact, as we take a look at the impact footprint, you do see Earth is right in it. So it could be a decent hit for aurora photographers. We could get a chance for some aurora down to mid-latitudes for a short bit, likely about um, mid-afternoon on the 20th. Of course, if the storm arrives late, it's going to be even weaker than that. But aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you should definitely get a show. And aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, it might be worth a look. And so as we switch to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over this coming week, we are going to be expecting to have a storm watch starting around the 19th. And this is because we, just in case that solar storm ends up being a little bit fast, we're going to be watching for it. Plus, we have a little bit from those tiny little solar storm that launched just a day before. So we could get a little bit of activity. Uh, NOAA is expecting active to minor storm conditions on the 20th and about 50% chance of a major storm at high latitudes and this could easily last in through the 21st before things settle down so roar photographers if you're at high latitudes you definitely should be going out for a look now at mid latitudes the story's not quite the same we're still going to be on a storm watch on the 19th and this is mainly because we do have that little mini solar storm that's coming ahead of this bigger storm and we could see about 25 percent chance of uh, active conditions on the 19th but likely the active conditions will hit us on the 20th and into the 21st we might even get a small chance for a minor storm at mid latitude so our war photographers if you're at mid latitudes probably late on the 20th or into the 21st is going to be the best time to to go out and take a look uh, because there could be a chance for aurora reaching you eh, a little bit sporadically 
And now switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week. Well, we are dealing with a uh, solar flux that's climbing a little bit right now. We're sitting in the 150s and we're going to be climbing into the 160s, possibly by into the 170s by late week as all of these new active regions rotate into Earth view. We are sitting at minor noise on the radio bands right now. And this is because mainly because of the new regions that are rotating into Earth view. We know is giving us about a 30% chance of an R1 to R2 level radio blackout. Those are M class flares and even about a 5% chance of X class flares at the R3 level radio blackout. And these conditions will likely uh, continue to rise as we get through midweek. We could see uh, moderate noise on the bands by that time with, with uh, more of these active regions rotating into Earth view. I'm expecting that uh, risk for radio blackouts will climb to about maybe 40 or even 50%. It's really hard to tell. And of course, the risk for X-class flares may also rise as we move later into the week because we do have those big regions and they have been flaring on the sun's far side. Switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlooks over the coming week, we are dealing with enhanced radiation storm conditions. In fact, right now we're sitting at the D2 minor range, and this is at flight level 360. And this was due to that S1 level radiation storm that was launched back on the 15th. Luckily, things are beginning to settle down now. We're only at elevated levels. We're below the S1 radiation storm level now. And by about Wednesday, we should be sitting back at the D1 normal range, and that's the S0 quiet range for everyone else. Luckily, we only have about a 5 to 10 percent chance of additional radiation storms at the S1 to S2 level, and that's likely going to continue throughout this week. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew and you high-risk passengers, stay vigilant this week because we do have a little bit of uh, enhanced radiation conditions right now, but things should settle down pretty, pretty well. But next week, expect these risks to rise. So the space weather this week is getting very exciting. We have an Earth-directed solar storm that could hit us right around the 20th. Now, it's not a direct hit, but aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could definitely get a show. And aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, around the 20th to the 21st, it might be worth a look. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, things have been pretty quiet over the past week, but it looks like things are picking up in terms of uh, radio blackouts because we have some new regions rotating into Earth view. In fact, one of them is a returning region that we know is an X-flare player, and it looks like we have at least one more as well. So these regions are going to be causing a lot more noise on the bands, but we're also going to raise that solar flux up a bit. So you're just going to have to deal with a bit more noise as well as some radio blackouts on Earth's day side, but propagation should remain in the good range. And now you GPS users, well, you know, we're going to have some issues on Earth's night side once that solar storm hits. So if you have to be flying anywhere around Aurora, stay vigilant and make sure you calibrate your magnetometers often. But on the Earth's day side, it shouldn't be too bad this week. But as the week continues and we get more of those big uh, flare players rotating into Earth view, stay vigilant because radio blackouts could definitely cause some issues. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.